Hey everybody, we're working on Christmas goodies today and today's just been a really cold day. Uh, I think it was 19 for the low this morning. Right now it is what time? Almost 3.30 and it's just 36 degrees. So I went down and gave the horses a little extra hay a while ago and um, I put them out in the field so they can get some sunshine and walk around a little bit instead of just being confined to the paddock area. And, um, but I made Daddy's maple cream candy yesterday and I've got it rolled out in balls so I'm gonna coat that with, in some butterscotch in a little while. But before I get started on that, I wanted to make the party mix that I make every Christmas. And this recipe I got from Taste of Home. And I was thinking of back before the internet and how we had magazine subscriptions. And Taste of Home was one of my favorite ones. And I miss those days. It seemed like things were just so much more relaxed then than it is now. But anyway, I, I really enjoyed sitting down and just with a cup of coffee and looking through Taste of Home or Southern Living or Country Living and but um, everything's on the internet now. But anyway, this recipe is real simple. It's not one that you have to bake like a lot of the party mixes are. So I'm gonna show you how I do it and everybody in the family loves it. It's kind of addictive. You can't stop eating it once you start. <laughs> so to um, start with, you need a large container and I'm gonna use this large cake container that I have with a tight lid on it and it will fill this whole thing up. So <clears throat> the ingredients that you use is a 12 ounce bag of mini pretzels. So I have these. We like sliders that you can use any brand, even the cheap brand for good. This is, I think, a 14 ounce, what, somewhere? No, it's 16 ounce. I don't use that. I'll save some for later just to snack on. And then you use two six ounce packages of bugles, original bugles. And these are seven and a half ounces. I'm going to use whole bag. I like the bugles in it, so a little extra won't hurt. I guess I could bring you down a little bit more so you can see what's going on down here. Then you use a 10 ounce can of salted cashews. I like lots of nuts in it. And I got this large can at Aldi's. It's 14 ounces, <coughs> excuse me, 14 ounces of cashews, halves and pieces. So I'm gonna just put all of that in. And a six ounce bag of the mini cheddar cheese fish crackers. Instead of using the fish crackers, I'm going to use the little square uh, cheeses. So you can make this your own. But if you don't like the fish crackers, use this. If you prefer the fish crackers, use them. Now, that's all the ingredients the recipe calls for, except for what we're gonna coat it with. But I had some check cereals that I need to use before they expire, so I'm gonna throw them in too. May not use some of it, but put some of them in here. And the rice checks, that was the wheat checks that we were putting in. And there's some white rice checks. Let's see these out of the way. 
And now you're just going to try to mix these up a little bit. I just used two long wooden spatulas. And I just go under and lift up. Trying to be careful not to break up any more than necessary all these pieces. Okay, now you take one envelope of the ranch salad dressing mix and you just sprinkle that all over top. And since I added a little bit of extra, I'm gonna put a little extra ranch seasoning in there. I have some in the bottle and I'll just throw some of that in there too. Since I added some extra check cereal, I just wanna make sure everything gets coated good. Just mix that in again. And it just falls through when you go under and lift up. And just be careful that you don't flip it out of the bowl. <laughs> All right. Now you've got the dressing in there. I see some must have come out of that pot that was a clumpy piece. Let me just get that back in. Okay. Now it calls for three fourths cup of canola oil. And I have that measured here, but I'm gonna add just a, little, just a little extra since I added more cereal than what it called for. Just to make sure everything gets good and coated. And you drizzle that all over. You don't just dump it in in one place. You wanna just drizzle it all over. And then you give it a stir again. And this is all there is to it, guys. You just stir, give it a good stir. Help things get coated well and evenly. And then you just put the lid on, make sure it's a tight fitting lid. And by tomorrow or later this evening, it will be ready to eat. So give it a try. It's great to have just to sit and snack on while you're watching TV. If you have some left over from Christmas. Uh, you can make it in January for the Super Bowl games, all the football games. It's great to have the snack on. Joe and I watched a movie the other night that was good. What one? Which one was that? The one with Richard Thomas in it. I think it was called um, The Message in the Gift Box. It was recommended, came up on a recommended section on YouTube. So we watched it, and it was a good movie. It really was. So I'll keep stirring this, I'll put the lid on it, and then I'll get started coating my maple candy, and I'll bring you back for that. Okay, I'm making the dipping, um, I guess dipping sauce for the maple balls <coughs> that I made. 
and it's an old recipe and it called for one stick of paraffin wax and two small packages of butterscotch chips. Well, my paraffin wax comes in cakes. I call it a cake, not a stick. So I put a whole cake in there and melted it in the double boiler. And I've just added one um, 11 ounce bag of butterscotch chips. And I'm going to go ahead and add the second bag because this is pretty runny. So. And it's not taking any time. I just made myself a, a makeshift double boiler. <laughs> show you a little bit more down here just had an old pot without a handle I put water in and this pot fit on it perfectly with the handle to hold it with so that is what I'm doing and melting and stirring and melting and stirring Yep, I think this is going to work out good. So that was two bags. Mine were 11 ounce, not 12 ounce. They change the size of things all the time. Two 11 ounce bags of butterscotch chips to one cake of paraffin wax. And once this is ready, I'll get my tray of candy out of the refrigerator and start dipping. Okay, I'm starting to dip my candy. Just took them out of the refrigerator. Where did it go? Don't leave it in there very long, it'll melt. Put it on parchment paper. Pretty good. This smells so good. So Joe's trying out the maple cream candy that we finished off today. It's creamy on the inside with that butterscotch coating on the outside. How is it? It's good. It's sweet. Joe's having trouble with his eyes today. They're burning. He's done that before. Yeah. We have to get some more drops to put in your eyes. Mm. That's good. Okay. This recipe makes about six dozen of these maple cream balls. This was my daddy's favorite candy. He and I both had a love for maple nut goodies. And this is what it reminds me of, but I didn't put nuts in it. The recipe just calls for the cream, no nuts, but if you wanted it more like a maple nut goodie, you could certainly crush up some peanuts and put in that. But we like them just like this. Yeah, that's great. So hope you all are making some good treats for your Christmas. I have a and w root beer. You haven't had one of those in a long time, have you? Mm -hmm. Is it good? <sighs> Very good. <laughs> we just finished supper. We had meatloaf, fried potatoes, steamed broccoli. Really hot. 
and he puts hot sauce on his potatoes. So we're going to call it an evening and we'll talk to you guys later. Okay, I'm up. Well, good morning. Today we're going to make some sausage pinwheels. And these are a great uh, snack for breakfast. It'd be good with the holidays coming up. They, if you do finger foods like Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, or breakfast for Christmas Day, or if you go to a, a party or a church function where you bring appetizers or finger foods, this is a good one to do. It's quick and it's delicious. Everybody loves them. So you make them with two cans of crescent rolls. One pound of sausage, and I'm using the country sausage from our local farmer, Tony Slaughter, and Parmesan cheese. And you can use the kind that shakes out of the bottle, but I don't have that, so I'm using the pre-grated Parmesan, what I have on here. So what you do is um, you roll out the crescent rolls into rectangle shape. on a lightly floured surface. So you gently unroll that. And I just do one can at a time. Now you want to pinch where it's perforated. You want to pinch that together Hold good and pinch down diagonally where it makes the triangles. That one kind of tore, so I'll pinch that together too. It's another cold morning this morning, so I guess that's normal. Today's the first day of winter, and I'm already over winter. <laughs> So, I just don't like cold weather. Now, once you get those pinched together, you just take a little rolling pin, put some flour on there, and you just kind of roll it out to make that rectangle shape. Too thin, but just enough to get a good rectangle there. Need more flour on my roller. This is an old Pampered Chef roller, but it has really come in handy on certain things. Okay, so I've got my two rectangles. Now you take half of the sausage and press it down. Let me open this. Those vacuum sealers really work good. Okay, here we go. I'm going to take half of the sausage for this can of crescent rolls. And you just press it in on the dough and you leave about a half inch space at the end. And I'll keep pressing this and I'll be back. Now I've got the sausage all spread out evenly on the crescent rolls. And you can use any sausage you want. Any sausage you want. I just had the, we like the country sausage, so that's what we use. 
So all you do now is spread some Parmesan cheese on top of the sausage and then you um, roll it up starting at the long end so you have a long rectangle and then you just slice it in like half inch pieces. Here we go. Got my Parmesan cheese. And like I said, the kind that you shake out in the bottle works great. And you just eyeball it. There's no set amount that you put on here, just how much cheese you'd like to have on it, but we like plenty of it. Now you just start at one end, start with this one, and start rolling it and pinching it as you go. the underside where you pinch the uh, things together, the per perforations. Am I saying that right? You want to pinch it as you roll it over anyway. You can't go wrong with this recipe. So easy and quick and so delicious and something hot. On a cold day, you just want something hot. Okay, got that one rolled up. So what we're going to do now is I cut it in half and half again and half again and half again to get uniform pieces. and you lay them on a cookie sheet, and I've lined mine with the nonstick aluminum foil. Turn this way. Yep, leave a little space between each one. Okay, just roll this one up and I'm pinching the bottom edges together. Okay, here we go. Half, 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 and half. Half, 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 and half. And one more time. And what I like to do is just put a little more Parmesan on top of each one. The oven is preheated. The oven's preheated at 350 degrees and it will take about 20 minutes, maybe a little longer for these to bake. You want the sausage to get done inside and they will just be golden brown. So you just eyeball it with your oven to see how long it takes. Okay, the first batch just came out of the oven and they are nice and golden brown and you can see the sausage is browned and it's done. So as soon as it cools a little bit, we'll have Joe taste test it and see what he thinks. Joe's going to uh, eat some of the sausage pinwheels and tell you just how good they are. Here's two of them I got okay. out for you, honey. I'm going to get two out of here and see what we've got. They've cooled enough to where you can eat it, I think. Mm. That's good. Very good. A good breakfast. Yeah, it's a great bre bre breakfast. Let me see it. 
nice and golden brown on the bottom. Has a great flavor to it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So I hope y'all give this recipe a try. I think you'll like it. So here is wishing all of you a very Merry Christmas and may you enjoy the blessing of celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. See you later.